Hello and welcome back. And today's episode is going to be a bit different, actually quite special in a way. So as the sun rises over our world, I find myself reflecting on just how far we've come this season of the Channel 64 S&P server. And from the first day when this place was nothing more than a blank canvas to the thriving world that we've built together, each moment has been very much a part of our story. Every block we've placed, every adventure we've embarked on, and every challenge we've faced together have already just added new chapters to our story. And this season has really been so much more than just building structures or gathering resources. It's been very much about creating memories and turning our ideas into reality. The thing is, as much as I've loved this journey, after some serious thought, I've actually decided to wrap up my time here on the season 3 world of Channel 64 a bit earlier than I'd originally planned or anticipated, and truth be told, it wasn't an easy call to make, but sometimes I think you just know when it's time to turn the page. My inspiration has been running dry for a little while now in this world, and life outside the game has also played its part too, but looking back, I really am super proud and shaft of what we've achieved and all the memories we've made together. And I am so excited to come back stronger than ever in season four alongside my fellow cast members with fresh energy and ideas and more. But you know what? This what has been such a full place filled with creativity, fun, exploration and connection. And while this chapter might be coming to a close, this story is far from over. And today we'll take a moment to look back through everything we've built here on this world and celebrate our journey. So let's go back to the beginning. Our first build actually takes us to Saltwater Island where when we first joined, we made up this helicopter complete with a ladder to lower us down onto the island below. And once touched down on the ground, we had built up this cozy campsite complete with a perfectly pitched tent stocked with all the basic workstations, storage and a bed for us to sleep in. And I was really proud of how we managed to nail the organic shape of the tent. I mean, it's always quite hard be anything organic but it was uh, definitely one of my favorite starter bases for sure it was really all about keeping things humble and simple and just capturing that true survival spirit and considering i joined quite late on into the season it just felt nice just to start things off slow and simple just to help us build up momentum and go from there and then the helicopter design itself was actually something i came up with before joining channel 64 but it just felt so right for this world i mean what better way to drop down onto an island than, uh, and join a server than from a helicopter, right? I mean, plus it was also one of the first vehicles I ever designed and it just... And it also just really helped set the tone for our industrial modern building theme that really defined the season for us. But uh, I didn't stop there, because uh, one of the other things I actually built early on was I made use of some of the vertical space over the island and I actually built up a hot air balloon with Channel 64 branding just floating above the island and it just... I would just always feel like the vertical space is somewhere that's just always kind of overlooked in a lot of worlds. It just felt satisfying just to add something and just contribute to the area in a unique way that's been fitting in my style. And you know, these builds really marked the start of our journey. It's just combining creativity with practicality just to build something that's quite memorable for a starting point. Episode two was really a turning point for us as it was when we started to explore the world and search for that perfect spot to build the base that would eventually become our home on the server for nearly a year. And I had kicked off this journey by constructing a small motorboat that was supposed to symbolize our voyage from Salter Island over to this little island over here that I'd originally wanted to settle on and build up some sort of base here. But uh, although we didn't do much here in the end, other than a, a, an amazing chest monster, as well, inspiration took us down a different path into the direction of an industrial mega base instead. But it still at least led me into the theme of a modern style building with sort of a lot more of the concrete. As in the same episode, we also built up our first ever shop to sell concrete to all the other cast members. And this build was definitely a bit of an experiment into that, into a modern or minimalistic design. And as a first attempt, I think it turns out pretty well. And I even actually did an interior for a change, which as many of you may well know, I usually leave to the last minute if at all. So all in all, it was definitely a success. 
But another highlight really in this episode was the festive themed area on Channel 64 that was done last year and where everyone got together to build loads of festive themed builds and mini games. And uh, well, for my contribution, I built a winter themed steam train making its way across a viaduct between these two mountain peaks. And I have to say, it might actually be one of my favorite builds of all time. And with shaders on, I could just honestly stare at it all day. In episode three, we really stepped up our game by tackling our very first mega build on the server, a factory to house all of our concrete related farms. And this project really was a leap into a more experimental and industrial style, really just pushing me to try new things and explore new building techniques that I just never really tried my hand at before. But uh, while the core structure relied quite heavily on shades of concrete and terracotta, and it was quite minimal, I guess you could say, in design, I focused instead on adding in life and character with lots of external details, from the copper pipes that are snaking out the sides to the antennas and the solar panels on the roof. I think these little touches just really help bring the factory to life. And uh, this build, I think, really turned out to be a huge success and it quickly became the centerpiece of our mega base to come. I also had spent some time adding in an initial road and parking bay areas, just grounding the build and making it feel a bit more connected to the surrounding area. I built up the parking bays with future plans in mind, since I also knew that eventually I'd want to design and add various vehicles like trucks to transport goods to and from the factory. Episode 4 gave us a break from the heavy base building and actually took us back to the heart of the Channel 64 Season 3 world, Saltwater Island. And here I focus on completing my first ever minigame on the server, a Skydrop Challenge, where players would skydive from a pine trying to catch a number of falling items whilst navigating through a series of glass hoops. And then it gets scored up based on how many items they collected and then which hoops they pass through. Sure, it might not necessarily be the most original concept, because I know there's plenty of other people out there that have done similar things, but it was all just about having a bit of fun and creating something exciting in the sky for everyone on the server to enjoy. Plus, it gave me a chance to dapple in a bit more redstone, which is just something I don't usually dive into all that much, as I generally lean towards more creative building. But I do also enjoy dappling and creating some simple circuits now and then, just to bring a bit of life and interactivity into some of my projects. And you know what? For a game that's pretty straightforward, I have to say, it turned out to be a blast, and I really enjoyed making it. In the same episode, I also built up a small memorial for Jelly over on Saltwater Island. I've been a fan of Scar's content for many years, and well, Jelly, she'd always been such a beloved part of his streams and videos, and this was just my way of paying tribute and showing my appreciation in the, the best way I knew how. Episode 5 saw us returning to the factory where I set myself a new challenge, designing a variety of vehicles just to kind of fill out the space and just add in some more fine details and energy into this whole area. And this really was a turning point for me when it came to vehicle designs in general and in Minecraft, because well, before Channel 64, I usually had shied away from these sort of projects because they're just a little bit more intricate, there's a bit more uh, detailing, finer detailing in them to make them a bit more accurate. And well, just something I've never really done that much of before. But this time I really pushed through and I was generally chuffed to bits of the results. I mean, I built everything from some trucks for loading and unloading of resources from the factory. I bought a van for just transporting all our workers around the site and then cars driving up and down the roads. And I even made a little motorcycle parked up next to the site workers cabin. And if at this point I hadn't already been excited for the future of this place, then I had been now as well. Things were coming along in leaps and bounds. Episode 6 was absolutely huge for us, as for the longest time in typical me fashion, my storage situation had spiralled totally out of control, with chests scattered out everywhere in a truly chaotic mess. But this episode really marked the turning point where I'd finally tackled it head on and actually created my favourite storage hall to date. And it wasn't just any storage hall. Instead of just building another building over in the industrial zone, I actually decided to use the nearby waterways to construct a massive cargo ship to house all of our items. And looking back, I really can't believe that I hadn't thought of this sooner. I mean, the cargo ship, it just fits perfectly with this industrial theme and it actually sparked a ton of ideas for future expansions, including a full on dockyard that we'd actually build later on in our series. You know those moments when inspiration hits and you just have to go with it? Well, that's exactly what really happened here, all in all. I mean, the idea of the cargo ship originally popped into my head after seeing some images of a real cargo ship online, and I just got so excited about building my own version while simultaneously solving my storage problems. So constructing a ship here was an absolute blast, but uh, you know what, if that wasn't enough, then designing the storage hall 
inside of the cargo hold actually was equally fun as for once, I actually generally enjoy just diving into some interior design and adding in loads of little details just to make the space really functional but also pretty visually appealing and uh, even though the storage hall doesn't really strictly match with the rest of the design of the ship, I, I didn't even really care as I just loved how it turned out and I just felt incredibly proud of what I had actually built and achieved. So I think to anyone out there building their own projects and my advice would be just don't get too hung up on whether everything matches perfectly. Just have a bit of fun with your builds and just let the inspiration guide you and you might actually be surprised at where it leads you. In episode 7 we took a big step back and really slowed things down as I had been pushing really hard to finalise a lot of the dockyard designs that I had been working on to complete our mega base, but I would hit a real creative slump if I'm honest, so instead of really forcing at this point, I ultimately changed gears to a more relaxed slower pace and actually constructed up a simple lighthouse at the estuary leading up to the main base and the design was intentionally quite minimalistic because I just wanted to spend a bit more time terraform in the area instead. I didn't want to be spending too much time on an ultra detailed build so it was just nice and chilled and laid back. But it was also in that same episode that we also jumped into a limited time build competition organised by Loki for all the other server members and it was just a perfect excuse to also just engage in some laid back building that was actually completely unrelated to the main base and I got to work and I constructed something that I am really passionate about in real life and that is he adapted SpaceX rocket module and it was a blast, pun intended, and I was thrilled with how it turned out. Now it might not necessarily have been super accurate to life, but this is Minecraft so you can kind of use your imagination and kind of build it any way you like. So yeah, I was really happy how it came out and winning a judge's choice board on top of it was just the cherry on top. Finally then, in episode 8 we made one last big push to complete the dockyard. It was a project that I've been dreaming of for so long now and honestly it had been a bit of a daunting task as it had become quickly my largest build product to date ever in Minecraft. And I'd spent countless hours perfecting the design in a creative world and gathering all the resources needed to bring it to life. And whilst I could have kept going and adding even more, I was actually starting to feel the burnout at this point. So I ultimately decided to draw the line and call the project complete. But we really had achieved so much. We revamped roads, adding in details like traffic lights, building in silos, storage containers, a warehouse, a crane, and so much more. We even had some additions from some of the other server members like Arrington, who contributed this awesome sushi ramen food truck that really helped set the scene outside of the factories of preventing a nice stop for all our workers to pop out and get some lunch before returning to the grind of work. On top of that, Archie popped by and built us out some armor stand scenes just to kind of add in some more life and energy into the area and I really love it and it's definitely inspiring me to try and uh, possibly do a bit more of this in the future and I think maybe in season 4 I'm going to focus a lot more on trying my hand at the armor stand mod and adding in more detailing into my builds. But you know what? I am still happy with everything we've done so far. And I really am starting to run out of words just to express how proud I am of everything that we've managed to achieve. And it's just so much that I never thought I'd ever be able to do in Minecraft. And after years of watching and idolizing Hermitcraft builds, it felt amazing to actually achieve something even remotely close to that scale and bringing my vision to life. And more broadly, being a part of something as incredible as Channel 64 has been a truly unforgettable experience. From day one, I was blown away by the sheer talent and creativity of all the other server members, as well as just how welcoming everyone has been, including the community as a whole. So although I'm wrapping things up here on the Season 3 world a little bit earlier than I'd originally planned, I really am looking forward to Season 4 and coming back with renewed focus, energy and excitement to try even more new things. So thank you all for being a part of my journey and your support means the world to me so I can't wait to see what season 4 has in store but until then keep building, stay inspired and I'll catch you in the next adventure.